Okay, welcome back to the APTA Grand Prix Series. We're in the semifinal match of the men's open division. Michael Montalbano and Louis Vauclair playing against Victor Vidal. And Lucas Green. And Lucas Green. This is Michael Montalbano serving, his partner. Vidal. Vauclair's at the net. We're going to get a score for you right now. Yeah, we'll get the players once they get back on the court. I think uh, Jackie Cameron just got out there and got a score for us. It's a good match between the number one seeds of Montalbano and Volclair and our men's open draw. All right. And uh, the number three seeds, I believe, of uh, Vidal and Green. Victor Vidal, Lucas Green. And, you know, I like this match. I'm curious as to score. So Montalbano and Vauclair are up 3-2, first set. All right, so there we go. And we'll see if we can, we don't have an umpire up there, so no one calling the score. So we'll try to get good at that. Up there, the Maybe mark we'll off. try and get good at that, Brad. Well, I'm gonna try. That's the best I can do, Mark, is try. There is no try, Brad. Only do? Exactly. Thanks, Yoda. You, you gave me the full Yoda there. There's that big Montalbano backhand. It's one of the best on the tour, actually. Great shot from Volclair. So th this will be the difference between the teams right there. Montalbano and Volclair have skills. They can, Montalbano can rip the backhand. Volclair runs around, he can blitz. He just hit a cut winner there. But they're not particularly disciplined. They sort of do whatever, you know, at any time. And they don't necessarily have any kind of plan. You know, Green of Vidal, they're kind of a team that will grind. They can play. They play position well. They play a good style of game. The difference there is they probably don't have, like Vidal, his offense can disappear a little bit. And just so we know, this is Lucas Green service, serving here. And his partner, Victor Vidal, at the net. And the light blue on the far side is Louis Vauclair and his partner, Michael Montabano, in the black. Yeah, I would have described Monty as becoming far more disciplined than he ever was. But that doesn't make him disciplined yet. No, it doesn't. But he's improved at it enormously. Yes. But uh, Vidal and what I've seen out of Vidal and Green is Green can kind of hit it on both sides. That's a little bit of a loose overhead. Surprising Montalbano forehand drive, though. But all right, so 15-30. So 2-3, 15-30. Vidal are, they, they can play tough and good level. You see Vidal looking to hit long, hard overheads into Montalbano's forehand side. All right, 30 all. Montalbano actually hit a good forehand there and it wasn't the time for it. His backhand is just a thing of beauty. Which is amazing given the fact that he's not a, what you'd call a advanced tennis player. Yeah, he's got a great backhand. And it's funny, the way he hits it is, is more unique, too. It's almost like he stands still. It, it, it doesn't have footwork, really, or, or per se, like the other guys or Parsons. It, he just hits it beautifully, cleanly. It's wisely, you see Green not coming in. Great wow. read there. There's Montabano's unique volleying style. So just to, to reiterate, it's 2-3-30 all, first set. Oh, missed there by Vidal. That's break point for Montabano and Volclair. Great lob there from Montalbano. Oh! Claire misses the volley. Yep, right there, too. Deuce. Two good forehands in a row for Montalbano. That's unusual. Uh, so, therefore, he decided to miss the backhand on the third. He so stunned himself. Oh, 
Oh, great rip there from Beauclair. Beauclair's got a lot of talent, but it hasn't been his talent that's kind of held him back. And that's been one of Montalbano's problems. That's just a loose overhead. Called out. out. I think they don't necessarily agree with it. From my angle, it's hard to tell here, but. Didn't really question it. Yeah. So that one looked further out than the one they called out. All right, so game point here for Lucas Green. Get back to three all. Oh, just in. The strategy so far that I've seen, Mark, is they're mostly trying to go deep into Montalbano's forehand corner. They're mixing around a little bit. Roger McNerney are up 4-3 in the second set against Verdoya Morneau. Oh, good move there from Volclair, but he can't come up with the goods. Okay, three all. I don't know about for you, Mark. They got the lights on now, but dusk is the hardest time to see. Yeah, I agree with that. So, Montalbano Volclair switching at the net get the Vauclair, normally you'd say to get the Vauclair overhead in the middle, but I might say to get the Montalbano overhead out of the middle in this <laughs> case. There you go. That's a good drive and look from Mr. Vidal there, but a little late getting to the net. Nice blitz there from Green. 15 all, three all, 15 all. Brad, what do you think of the format they've used today, the experimental format? You know, the elite draw, you know, top 16 teams, it brings you right in to the matches right off the bat. There is no room for the uh, top teams to sort of have a match to get into it. So it sort of ramps up the intensity right out their way, and it's going to get done in one day. It's going to be a long day out here. There's got 430 players or 450 players playing today. Um, it's been interesting when you change it up that way. I mean, the day has really gone well in terms of the, the timing of it all. Much better than I think anybody could have hoped. That's a slap volley from Montalbano. Ooh, should let that one go to the screen. 30-15. Good swing from Vidal, 40-15. That's a great shot from Vauclair, and he holds for 4-3. Nice. So you think Vauclair's the best French paddle player? Oh, I don't know. Max Lefebvre might have something to say about that. But for he argument's sake, I'm going to say yes, yep. absolutely, we'll without a doubt. Okay, so Victor Vidal to serve. 3 4, first set. Good look there, just misses the backhand. If the Broderick match goes, match goes three, but you know what, I take it back. I don't think we're moving that one regardless. Because the women's final is going to be on that court. It's coming up. So let's talk a little about that women's final for a second, Mark. Who do you, who do you like in that one? You know, every time Vicky stuck lots of steps in the court, I like her. She's so good. 
you know, and she's played sparingly, you know, of family. She just seems to see the court differently than most of the other women, Brad. You know, to me, she brings the perfect combination of control, some power when needed, great volleys, great hands. She does. She rolls the ball low at somebody's feet, quick lobs it up. She's better lobber than most of the women. And she just comes out there. She's like a little bit of a magician out there. Well, that's a bad miss from Vauclair. You know, Brad, I think I'm going to push him down to the number two Frenchman after that miss. Well, you know, I'm sure it's back and forth. He'll, maybe he'll rise up to number one again at some point in time. For all. So right now, Montalbano and Volclair in the ranks. He's ranked 27 in the country. And Green and Vidal are ranked 35th in the country. But there are a lot of teams ahead of them that are kind of phantom teams. Yeah, you mean like just like Araya playing with Le Pivere as opposed to Parsons. Or and Araya Morneau right. and Durant They're, Parsons. Right, combinations of the top players who just weren't playing together. And that probably takes up about seven or eight. So you could probably figure them, both these teams are around 20 in the country, 20, 25. Oh, Montalbano with two spectacular volleys. Lucas Green. The other thing that concerns me a little bit about the women's final, Brad, is when Hanish and Van Starnberg played Stoklasova and Jade Curtis in Boston, I just didn't sense a lot of belief from them. Interesting. I think that Vicky, Vicky I mean, Stuklasov is such a tremendous player. I think she can be very intimidating. I think a lot of people don't have a lot of belief when they go out in the court against her. You know, the problem is it's so hard to hurt her or get her to be. She's completely unflappable as well, meaning there isn't any situation that she doesn't seem prepared for. It's like you said a little before. She sees the court a little differently. She's a little ahead of the game. When she drives, she doesn't blast it like the other players, yet it feels like it was just as effective or more so. But she feels like she's two or three shots ahead of the rest of the yep. people on the court, doesn't it? Yep. It's kind of like when I'm playing with you and I'm three shots behind you. That's if I can make three shots. Yeah, it's 50-50. Great lob there. Wow, great turnaround backhand from Montalbano. Oh. That backhand, not so great. Break point, four all, 30-40. Oh. Smart from Lucas Green to stay back there. He thought about coming in, but ball on the Montalbano backhand. More likely to miss the volley or pop it up to Volclair at the net. A little dangerous leaving that Montalbano overhead in the middle. <laughs> Think there'll be a switch coming? If I were Vauclair, I'd be running over there. Wow. Right on the line, great lob. Great shot at Montalbano's feet by Lucas Green. And they'll serve for the first set. Okay. 
So we got McNerney and Broderick on our other court there, and we're gonna switch it over to them shortly after this first set. So looks like they might be going three out there if we moved them over, that's what my guess would be, but we'll see if we can get a report on the Broderick-McNerney match against Udoya Morneau. Great pace there from Volclair. And Lucas Green surprised Vidal by driving that ball half pace. Probably should have lobbed it. You either got to go for that or lob it up. Got this partner hanging out to dry a little. First point, right, Mark? Love 15? Yep. Love 15. No. Great serve there from Green. But not as great as Monobana made it look. It's a ball you got to put back in play. Sure. It would require more footwork. Or some footwork. <laughs> That's still more. <laughs> it's a lot more. All right, 40-15. Double set point. Okay, game in first set, game Green first Vidal. Set, and we're now gonna move over to the men's elite semi. All right, quickly over there. And Mark, why don't you just give a quick introduction to our players on the court. So it's Micker Doy and the White Wilson overshirt. Overshirt? Overshirt? Uh, yeah, it's good Drew enough for Catches the let court. Jeff Morneau in the blue, his partner. And on the far side, Graham McNerney in the black and Drew Broderick in the white. So do we know if they split or we're just guessing? We don't. Well, hopefully the umpire will give us a score. Okay, so Morneau almost always serves second. So I would guess the score here might be five all. Three, four, something like that. Yeah, we know these points are likely to be longer. And it's been a battle. It was 3-2, I believe, McNerney and Broderick last we checked in, but that I was think we heard four, three. half hour ago. Yeah, so I'm thinking maybe five yeah, all. Yeah, yeah, hit it. I got it. Oh, good move, though from Odoya recognizing the Morneau drive. Morneau, it, there aren't too many better people to, to blitz behind than the Morneau drive. He hits it down so well. You know, you'd say that about Parsons too, but I would say the Morneau drive has even more of a downward trajectory than the Parsons drive. So first set to, first set to Roderick McNerney. Six games to four. 15-40. Right. 1540 here. And we're thinking five all, but we'll get the score hopefully after this game. And Morneau and McNerney played a chunk of the season together. Ooh, great hands there. Look at Roderick moving in there. That's a great control lob. They're trying to get more. Doya off the net. So you see her Doya and Morneau using some of that same strategy that Morneau and Araya use. Put Doya right on top. He can use his hand. Morneau back. Yeah, that's sort of the overhead Morneau has, just like a push low. It's very good in terms of an overhead that doesn't allow their opponents to attack, but it's it's not offensive at all, really. Nice cutoffs by Erdoya. A lot of balls with the 
Roger corner. I love it. Oh, that's such a smart block lob from McNerney. Well done. I go, I go, I go. You. You. I go. I go. You. You, you. Look for Julia Morneau to switch back shortly. Yeah, they're just going to keep dumping down the middle. Doria's got a massive forehand, but pretty rare that you ever see him in a backhand. You know, once in a while on a ball that's short in the court. He's trying to move over, just bait him into hitting it towards his forehand side. He's standing right on the hash marker Doya is. Oh, good hold from Broderick. It is. He's got it though. It's extremely quick. 40 off. All Great right. get from Ardoya. Yep. I noticed, you know, the cut overhead, the guys are so good at reading it now. They're getting 70% of them. And unless you hit it well, sometimes it works against you. And McNerney takes a forehand off Advantage the snowboard. From love but 40 to game point. It's be a huge hold. It'd be an amazing hold. Well, that's going to get hammered. Yep. Oh, yeah. he's down. First more. Oh. <laughs> that's a great tweener there from McNerney. Well, this could be a highlight film all by itself. Me. Both Odoya and Morneau went down this point. Oh, wow. You. Good volley there. You. Well, they're switching in the backcourt intentionally now. Yeah, interesting. You know, maybe McNerney's been hurting him into that side screen. Not sure. Ah, bad move. Roderick beats him before the Morneau can drive, get under the net, stuffs it. A little late for Adoya there on the move. Too soon. I mean, too late. He's cutting off those balls. Oh, that's vintage Morneau right there. Go ahead. You. I'll go. Me. You. Yeah. You. You, you, you. 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 Go. You. I'll go. Oh, rare miss lob there from Broderick. My guess is Araya Parsons are rooting for a nice long match. Another game point. Just an awesome game job Adoya and smart out. play from Erdoya. They win the second set, 6-3. They close out the set, 6-3. All right, so great job. A split sets here from Erdoya Murnau with a terrific comeback. You see, they have a good strategy there. You know, Murnau puts that serve in, and it's pretty much very drivable by almost anyone out there. You know, but they're having Erdoya move around at the net and cut it off, and Morneau staying back there. And the things that get by him, he's driving back, and Erdoya staying up there. It's it's a great look, and it's the modern game where even if you can drive the ball, he's going to drive it right back at you. It's yep. a very small window. And the problem is, if you try to take pace off the return so it doesn't fly off the back screen so the guy can't drive it back, then Erdoya, he cuts it off. Right. Or, or Morneau drives it off the deck. Yeah. Well, he's exceptionally good at that. One of the best in yeah. the country. I would say he and Parsons probably at the top of the list. Yeah. I, I, Morneau might even be number one on my list for that. It's very decisive of you, Brad. I said he might be number one on my list for that. Come on. For you, that's very decisive. Well, okay, that's fair. Well, I tell you what, it's been an incredible day out here. And the Short Hills Club does such an amazing job. They put on an incredible cocktail party later and a, you know, food, the whole works. 
ton of volunteers out here. Patty Hogan, I was sitting with her. She gave us a shout out. You see the beautiful facility here and the surrounding area. It's a beautiful area here, the Short Hills Club. And we're right there. Oh, just went away from us. I was about to wave. There we are. But uh, is that from our drone cam there, Kelly? That's our drone flying around. The, the APTA blimp, and uh, you know, it's nice. Little extra budget things, impressive. So what do you think, Brad? Who do you like in the third? Well, that was a really good play. I mean, it's hard for me to go against Broderick McNerney, but you know, that was great plan by Ardoya Morneau in terms of the way they were playing. It seemed like they had a plan, they were working with it, and it worked really well for them. But you saw a couple of uncharacteristic errors out of Broderick, but um, what we didn't see was a ton of that backcourt offense. We were wondering, and what you and I talked about before was, you know, first of all, McNerney has become one of the elite players out there, does not play the due side very often, you know, and more of his offense comes from that other side with an inside out forehand or the high backhand. So it'd be curious to see, you know, how they hurt him. I mean, it looks like the match has been a battle back and forth the whole way. You know, my guess is this is a, this is a major match for your geographic implications. You know, Drew Broderick has been the best player in New Jersey for a long time. Short Hills is unquestionably the, the gem of the New Jersey titles along with the league classic. And for Doya to beat Broderick here, I know would be a major accomplishment for him. Roderick is the four-time defending champion. Sure. And Odoya's been a great player for a while that everybody says has a massive talent, but that just hasn't broken through Nothing. for one reason or another. I mean, what do you think the reason Odoya hasn't fully broken through yet, Mark? Is that he hasn't had a full-time yeah, partner, you know, really? Dan Regan kind of bailed and went away a couple of years ago, and they yep. were kind of climbing the ladder at that point. Last year he played with a bunch of guys. Played here with Juan Araya. They lost in the finals relatively routinely, like two and five to Broderick and Palmer. And I think it's just a matter of playing at that level on a regular basis because that level is just so tight. There's so few guys who play at it. There's so few opportunities to experience it. And it's the only way you get there is by doing it. Well, clearly he's got the forehand. He's got the speed. He's got the shots. He can volley. You know, he's got all the tools. There's no question about it. You know, he's on our opening bump highlight reel running down a Raya drop shot, pushing it up the line for a winner. Around the net. Yeah, it's just one of these things. So, all right, so we got the third starting here with Graham McNerney to serve. Oh, great start. My, my favorite Mick Ordoya story is from a couple of years ago when he was an assistant pro at Innes Arden up in Greenwich teaching 45, 50 hours a week. And he took two weeks off to go home to play Davis Cup for Estonia in one of the elimination rounds. Oh. And I, I want to caution everybody that being a tennis pro and being a professional tennis player are about as similar as a baker and a, and a candlestick maker got nothing to do with one another. And Mick went home to Estonia, practiced for a week, and then won a singles match in Davis Cup over a Turkish player who's about 450 in the world. Yeah, that's an incredible story. Which is just a remarkable accomplishment. It tells you just how talented he is physically and mentally. Joy is a new father. At the end of the second set, we saw Erdoy and Morneau switching in the backcourt. Let's see if we see that from them again. Yeah, in this look, you're going to see them hitting the ball more to the sides. Oh, what a get. Heck of a drive off the screen there from Ernie. Ordoya was a little late coming in there. Well, I think he was so off balance making that get. You know, he just hit an amazing lob, but he, he had to recover first. 
Yeah, it's interesting, Brad. I see a lot of the league players run back and yell, it's in, it's in. And I'm always like, why would you tell your opponent that? Yeah. You don't want to give away any information. Keep thinking it's going to be out as long as possible. Oh. 40-15. Now we've seen Mark in matches pass. You know, Morneau, as great a competitor as he is, he gets tired sometimes in these later matches against the top players. You think that'll matter out here? He looks pretty fresh right now. Yeah, they had two relatively easy matches coming in. So I think he's going to be okay for this match. If this goes long, I'd be a little concerned about the final. If they get through, obviously. Well, there's no question this is going long. I mean, you know, we're into this one, I'm sure, a good hour and a half already. They started, went out of the court at, at uh, 3.45, so assuming a 10-minute warm-up, you're talking about still an hour 50? Yeah. And so we just started the third set. All right, so it was a good hold there. Just Micker Doya to serve. Ooh, he's trying the Broderick cut Zorro overhead. Right time, had Ordoy off the net. In a weird way, McNerney's so tall, it almost didn't get up high enough for him. He had to actually duck down a little to hit it. The opposite of Rush Jelnick. Good player from Westchester who did, wasn't blessed with quite as much height as McNerney, and everything was an overhead. Yeah, he could hit down on the ball. He's a great striker of the ball, Jelnick. That's what we're going to need to see. I think Otto McNerney is that forehand drive. Surprised to see few blitz opportunity or looks for uh, McNerney. He usually loves to blitz to be moving forward. I haven't seen one yet. Surprised Erdoya got beat there in transition. He was in perfectly good position. Well, they had confusion on the ball before. It kind of upset the rhythm of the point. But still surprised to see him miss that. Broderick, you watch him, he'll bait you with low lobs, quick off the deck, bait you to try and hit the ball down so he can move forward and hit spike overheads and cuts every now and then. You gotta be careful not to do that, but just push it back when he does that. Sort of soft and deep. The other thing a lot of the top players like to do is bait Broderick on the forehand side. By that, you mean just hit it soft over there. Yeah, yeah. both soft and short. But, you know, we know Broderick really doesn't get baited very often. You know, he'll wait. In fact, it's funny, he has a full semi-Western forehand, but he'll hit more continental flat forehands than anyone I know with a full semi-Western forehand yeah. in the middle of a match. You sort of push him low and at you constantly. Kind of see the orange of the sunset, Brad, reflecting off the clubhouse. Yeah, that's a background here. I'd say, Mark, you look good in that light. Got to look good in some light. <laughs> that might be the light that you look good in. So just try to Thank work you. that however you can into your life. That's a good lob right there. Yep. Now you see this is vintage Broderick point here. Just pushing, giving you nothing, hanging in, mentally tough. I mean, you called the match before, was a lot similar to this. 
and the match before that. Yep. Well, we've seen it. You know, a good friend of mine tells me that, you know, Drew Browder plays in the, in the league matches here. And the league matches. And a lot of guys and a lot of pros play league matches. Ooh, a little bit of a loose volley. It looked like he might have let it go, and then he volleyed it the last second. And then, you know, a lot of pros play these league matches more fast, and they try shots, and the matches can be over. But Broderick still plays those even with some discipline, and he'll win, like, two and two, but it'll take him an hour and a half, which is a surprise for a league match. 15:40. That ball was flying. Yep. Doyle got his hands up, and they're down at double break point. Yeah, that's two in a row. He just made a misjudge on. Oh, that's a great block lob by McNerney. It is the purple of the sky up there now. Beautiful sunset. McDurney makes a lot of really good decisions, but he doesn't have a lot of offense over there from that deuce court. Oh, that's such a good cutter from Doya. And well courage to done. hit it. Break point and down. Break point down. And I tell you, you don't want to get behind against Broderick McNerney because it's such a grind to catch back up. Every point becomes a slog, and then you're in a mental trap. Ho, oh, ho, ho! That's amazing. Touch there by Morneau. I hope he didn't apologize. He didn't. He just gave him a hand slap to Adoya and went on his way. There you see the semi-western forehand by Broderick. He's going to stay back. Smart. But that Mordo volleying style is amazing. It's so awkward, but he makes a lot. He's so good at it. Yep. Sort of like. Well, it's different than the Parsons style. He, he won't catch him cross-handed. He literally goes cross-handed to the other side. It's, it's unbelievable. I think it is similar to Parsons style. A little more awkward looking. He handcuffed him again. That's three of those volleys that he's found his left hip on. And Erdoya, it's sort of like the Novocaine that Broderick can, you know, does to you. After 20 lobs, he, he could have been over another six inches into position. He would have made it. Advantage Erdoya, Mornell. Yeah. The chip slice return. Wide. Not, not option A. Which option is it? That's where he's so tough. I love the move from McNerney there. Surprise. That's, I'm, I'm surprised we haven't seen more of it. That's what I was saying before. It, it is one of his great, he's a great blitzer, McNerney. And he's, I've seen him out volley Araya, out volley many of the top players in blitz exchanges. He was blocking me, I couldn't see it. Hi, good amount. All right. Advantage here, Dwyer. Roderick questions it. The umpire blinded from it, but uh, so the call stands. Advantage for Adoya here. Oh! oh. Game for Adoya, more no. It, it, may, it kills you even more when the guy's staying back, you know. But that was a smart move for Adoya. Roderick didn't know he was back. Great hold there for Adoya. Oh. One all. Back from 1540. Yo, yo, hey! I think that Good great eye. cut. At 30 for Yep. Courageous shot. Right here. See, 
there's that continental forehand that you'll see Broderick hit many more times than the semi-western topspin forehand. Oh, great lob by McNerney. I think it is so slow. The, net. the left got it. Left-handed left -handed push down the line. Great shot. Yeah. But I think the more you get more no moving now, the better it will be. Now that one obviously came out on top, but wow, what a volley. That's a mistake backing up and hitting a drive off pace on McNerney. But a remarkable first volley from Broderick. Incredible. Forty fifteen. Three straight misses there. Well, the, the only thing I have a concern one. about here is is that for the most part, Adoria and Morneau are having to work for every one of their points. Right there, they've in the last two service games, Adoria and Morneau way too many misses just on return. So, you know, Broderick and McNerney haven't had to work. Yes, you are. 10, 19, 22. So if they're switching, if using the warm up as a, as a game, they're two games late. Okay, if I'm glad not, you explained one game that because you know, you're just doing the math in your head was uh, astounding to me. 10, 19, 22. But Could have been uh, all wrong. Yeah. It's a lot of numbers. That's the last yeah, so I they're going to be switching balls. And that, see what McNerney's doing there? That is the official give me a ball sign when you squeeze your hands back and forth like that. Do you work with your members on that, Brad? That's one of the first lessons. Ball. All right, so a little break in the action here while we work on getting this ball. Ground to a halt. That was that the is that the official action in both Connecticut and New Jersey or just Connecticut? I believe it's nationwide, Mark. Oh, sort well, of like well, getting a check. You know, you gotta do the hand sign in the air check. Right? If you want a ball, you gotta put your hands up and squeeze your fingers back and forth. We've got a ball. I'm getting the check. Oh, well, he's taking one, okay. What I like to do, Brad, is take one, and then if it's a good one, then the phone doesn't play it. Let's count that one. In tournament play, that doesn't really work. In your friendly matches, I'm sure it works well. No, it doesn't work in those either, Brad. Yeah, because I don't think you have any friendly matches. All right, so he finally gets to it and faults on the first one. We've actually seen Morneau struggle with the surf from time to time. And he's been generally serving very well from what I've seen today. See more action up the net. Redoya, great job. Wow, such a good athlete. Stab volley there. Yeah, the middle like is just so safe. Honestly, in a weird way, I would find some opportunities to make Morno go back time and time again. The block lobs lower, great. But I'd like to see some high, deep pointed lobs pushing Morneau off the net time and time again. Make him keep working. Oh. Well, that's a bad miss right there. Fifteen forty. Could be a sign wow. of legs going, Brad. That's Too what I was saying, really, more than anything else. That's why I'm saying push these lobs up and deep. Make Morneau keep hitting ball after ball after ball. Then all of a sudden you're going to see a few missed drives. Like, you know, he's one of the best in the country on those one-time drives. But you'll start to see a miss here and there. We definitely saw it out of Del Monaco in the match before in the women's semifinal. Wow. Oh. Here comes the 
water. That's tough. Oh, the sheep more no just struggling there. It's a I'm great break. I'm exhausted watching. Oh, a lot of grunting out there. I'm limping a little bit now too. Well, this is what I, you know, what, what I'm thinking. That was a big break, but two donated with faults. One little lack of footwork, so 3-1. And like I said, you get behind here against these guys, and it's just so hard that you're going to have to work so hard to come back. Oh, oh shot from Broderick. Sick volley. Get the extra action with the ball bouncing up into the paddle. He cut that right into the board, the snowboard in the bottom. You should mention, Brad, that the, uh, the Blanchard and Childress Cups were decided today in the fifth and final Grand Prix. The guy's side looks like Hughes and Powers have won. We'll get some official confirmation. Interesting. From Ray Croston on the women's side, Anish Van Starnberger through. Grand Prix Tour just uh, been a tremendous addition to the APTA calendar. 30 left. Uh, I think there's a case of Ordoya trying to overcover now, doing too much. He might be sensing that Morneau's losing his legs a little bit. I'm not sure. And I can't tell if Morneau fully is or not, but it looks that way to me. It's the women's final is to follow this match, and the men's final will follow that one. Back to back. And just finishing up my thought about the Grand Prix Series, it was really the brainchild of Scott Bonder on APT President and Patricio Misitrano, and it's been a tremendous success. All kudos to the APTA for, the, for their efforts. Oh. 40 15. 40 15. Yeah, I, I think Porno was starting to get a little limp action going. I wonder if he's cramping. Game, Broderick, returning. That's what you'll see when it starts. He'll start to miss those balls. They lead balls. the third set, four games to one. I'm sorry? Uh, yeah, I don't think we need it, but thank you. <laughs> That's funny to hear from the umpire. He's like, he's like these a guys ball. are done. So I don't think I need it. I think these guys over here are going to win before we're going to have to change balls again. But. Can you start my car for me? <laughs> That's, That's right. Somebody cold. get the valet. They do have valet out front, part of one of the many services that they have out here because it's so full with cars and people out and around. All right, so 4-1. I mean, obviously, at this point, from what we see, it's a, it's a must hold, and it's going to be quite an effort just to even make the comeback after the hold, unless we see some errors like that out of McNerney and uh, Broderick. So obviously this isn't over yet, Brad, but talk to me a little bit how you see the final matching up, assuming Broderick and McNerney are able to close this out. Yeah, assuming Broderick and McNerney win this uh, against Araya Parsons, I think, look, Broderick and McNerney are awesome at the net. They're going to be fine up there. They have great attacking overheads, great volleys. You know, it's going to be a question of, well, it's always a question of how Araya plays and how mentally he is in the match. And then it's going to be a question of whether they have enough backcourt offense. Whether uh, McNerney and Broderick, Broderick have enough backcourt offense. Even now I'm seeing them just more work in the points, and I'm seeing just little, you know, lost energy on the Morneau and Ordoya side. Cat and mouse keep Morneau off the net. I mean, how about yourself, Mark? What are your thoughts? Well, Broderick obviously has that quality that we talked about before the last match. Very surprising miss there, that he can hurt Araya on that side wire. By cutting off the ball, yep. By cutting off the ball. So to me, that's when, you, when you're analyzing an Araya match, that's where you have to start. So if that were the case, then you're going to give the edge here to Broderick and McNary. Well, I think that's where you have to start the analysis. I think the match is pretty much a, a toss-up match. Sure. Because I do, I do wonder how much offense they're going to be able to generate from the backcourt. I mean, McNerney just does not generate that much from the deuce side. Well, it's, it's a bit hit or miss. You, you hit it. 
Now the other thing is though, Araya gets into these modes where he hits hard overheads down and up. And if he does that, McNerney's got plenty of offense yes, that's on a high ball. And if Araya's running around whacking balls, McNerney can beat Araya in the exchanges at the net as well. Ah. Uh, 30-15. The other interesting thing, Brad, and we'll have to get some confirmation on this is, I think if Araya Parsons win the tournament, they would pass Broderick Palmer for the two-seeded Nationals. Oh, that's extremely interesting because that throws a little thing into the mix. Wow. I wonder if Broderick would be aware of that even. My guess is he would be. I don't think there's much Broderick is not aware of. I'm not sure he's aware that you might be aware that he might be aware of that. And you're you're certain certainly aware of that? Show me some preciseness here, Brad. I'm working on it. It's a work in progress, my friend. Oh, such a good lob. You could almost see Morneau hoping that ball yeah, out. Got it. Yep. Knew it was good the whole way. And here they're switching in the backcourt again. Doy is struggling to get involved here now. So at the end of that second set, him just moving around, taking over. And that was such a mental blurt by Morneau that ball landed a foot from him. Never yeah, he had to be it. ready to read that spin, and it clearly spun over to Morneau, and he should have taken the ball. Also mentioned Brad that the APTA's national team go, championship go. is coming up. Oh. Oh. <laughs> there you got yeah. Erdoya. It's just too much of a fake out, and Morneau got confused. He thought Erdoya was taking the ball, basically going two miles an hour, Mark, and it hits uh, Morneau. Yeah, let's touch on that uh, national championship there. So Pete Rose, APTA vice president, is in charge of that initiative. If you're interested, reach out to Pete. It's Email address is on the website, but they run a great event in Chicago every year. Had 600 players last year. And what exactly is the national championship? Team Teams championship. from all over the country at every level of every gender getting together, play against each other. And they're all put in level specific tournaments. Yep. And if you don't have a full team and you have a partial team, give Pete a call. So any region in the country look to put together a team and get out there for a great event. National Team Championships. If you haven't been to Chicago for an event, they really had to run a tournament. Oh. Yeah, it's just, oh, and you can see Morno limp in there for sure. Roderick McNerney. Yeah, he's either cramping or he's got something going on. This is clearly a baby match point right here. Wow! Oh. <laughs> yeah, he's Dude. wants that one back. There's the mistakes that give your opponent's life a blip. Doya Morneau, Brad, would you be playing this way or would you try and hit some more hard overheads, aim for the nick, bail off the net? Well, they did a great job before when they had, you got to find a way for Doya to get involved. Right now they're just playing this patient game and doing nothing but 
they're achieving very little as well. You know, so when Ardoria's up there cutting off the ball and baiting them a little and you could get Morneau active by taking their drives through and driving them back, yeah, they got to make a little more happen out here. It just seems with Morneau cramping, this is a losing strategy right now. Of course, if McNerney keeps donating, then maybe not so much. That lob was out by a foot. Pace overhead there from Medoya. you got to grind but can't see how they're going to come back yep. I guess you can play each individual point just grind it out yep. just try to build one at a time but like you said I don't know how Morneau's going to last yeah because they've gone to a strict diet you know of just push overheads so Doria has a roller, he's got a cutter, he's got a variety of overheads. But this is what the great discipline of Rodman does. He knows it's in a crucial point in the match. He's not going to donate any points. And he feels even if he loses this point, he's working the other guys enough get tougher down the road. I actually like some of these high lobs now from McNerney, because when you get the other team in a diet of just pushing the ball, maybe it's time to throw a high lob and a blitz in, because they're getting used to just letting it drop and dump and drop and dump. And drop and dump. And drop and dump some more. So you throw up a high lob, you throw in a blitz, that forces them to speed up the overhead. Get a screen drive out of it, or even a possible successful blitz. You gotta like the discipline and mental fortitude for the players, though. How about the announcers? You know, I feel that my mental fortitude is being tested, but I'm up to the task. You want a second opinion on that? You don't think I'm up to the task? Come on now. It's definitely being tested. I agree with that part. I've never gotten so fired up in the announcer booth before. Go! Oh, there it is in the fist pump. We had one offensive shot played in the entire point, and it is a winner, so kudos there to Micker Doya. But I tell you, what, when we came back, that's the shot that basically launched him into the second set win when he yeah. hit that cutter down at 1540 in that game that was crucial to them winning that second set. So maybe uh, maybe there's more magic in the air, Doria cutter. Oh, look at that. He's hobbling over to the other side. Not sure how the switch is going to help because with Broderick hitting so many of the overheads, he's going to find him anyway. At least from the ad side, he's got a spore in the middle, he can take some swings. Ah, uh, 15 left. Little donation. Yeah, who knows? He's limping, cramping, probably. That's what I like about him on the head side, is he can take some cuts at the ball. Oh, how about that? 
15.30. Oh, the magical backhand cutter, Mark. Watch it. Oh, that's Patrick great. Patrick pulls off more volleys like that than any Eight. 10 players in the country. Eight. You, got a hit. Two, no. Not oh. Morneau. 30 off. Oh, yeah. Trying to help out Morno there. Oh. 40 30. All right. There's his shot right there. See at the top of our screen here too, you got Hanish and Van Starenberg starting to warm up for their women's final. It's a big drive there for Morneau. This is going to be a short point, Red. Go ahead. I think it'll be uh, over within a hundred balls. Gutsy prediction. Yeah. Putting it all out there. You counting? There you go. Good call, Brad. Right on, baby. But that's the type of play I want to see more from these guys rather yep. than just dump, 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 dump. Yep. Speed up the play. Take a crack at the nick. You caught it and McNerney missed. Oh, struggling. Just struggling. He would have easily gotten that ball before. Yep. But that's, that's a ball that... that Rodoy has got to take a cut out. He can't let it find his backhand with his serve. Oh, my goodness. That was a big opportunity there for Rodoy Mino. Five games to two. All right, 5 2. Do you think they got enough in the tank to make a comeback here, a run? Nope. How about you? No, I wouldn't say they do. They might get another game on a few donated balls, but uh, it'd be hard pressed for them to even hold here unless uh, you see McNerney and Broderick miss a few. But we'll see. We talked about earlier, just getting behind against these guys is such a slog to get back in it. The issue here now is you got more no serving. His footwork's not quite there. He can't move and cut off these balls and hit that patented drive back when they get it around her doya. So they get it to the backcourt. It's not going to be as effective, Morneau. Why do you think Odoya is not taking some more cracks at the nick with his roller? You know, I really don't know, Mark. Go ahead. Yep. Not sure. Maybe they've just settled in. This is one of the things that, you know, like Broderick McNerney, and sometimes it's you get lulled or you, you lose track of what you need to do. Or maybe he's thinking if he speeds the point up yep. that Morneau can't move yep. quick enough. I'm not sure. I mean, the one thing this does do by slowing the point down like this, the ball's moving so slowly, even a, you know, Morneau with some physical issues here, cramping up or whatever he has, you know, the point's not moving that fast where he can't get it. Oh, see there, just stretching even for a slow ball. I'll go. Yeah. Love your team. Yeah, I think one of the things you brought up earlier was a great point about the final, the potential final, which is does Araya have the discipline? to stay away from that side wire because that's pretty much all the offense we've seen from McNerney on a consistent basis today. You don't hit the forehand once in a while. Yeah, but, but even there, he just rolled it. You don't see him like thump it that, I mean, he'll hit it hard once in a while, but it's it's more or less kind of like he's almost trying to hit the guy with it as much as he just make it because he'll throw it as a surprise. Go. 15-30. Good 
just remind our viewers again, the women's final will follow immediately after this match. Oh, see, there's a couple there of good are. little donations. Let them hang around. Lion out there. Yep. Great dig. And there you go, Doya taking a high risk on a low ball. And it leads us to match point. Yep. Great shots. There's the roller. He's hit two on? and he's won two points with it. Would that be a message that maybe you should hit him more? Yeah, I mean, that's an inexplicable miss by Broderick Agreed. there, but. All right, match point number two. Great effort by Odorian Minot. We've seen this before. He, he just tires out. This, he's playing at the highest level still. It's hard to get through all the matches. I go, I go. Four matches a day like today is tremendous. I'll go. It's so physically demanding. I'll go. going. That's all I had. I was hoping for you to, for the next filler. Yeah. Not that useful as a co-commentator. It's a clear setup for you. Oh, here it is again. The oh, magical cutter. Shot. It's kept him alive so far. Got him into the second set victory. And now it's a break point. I mean, now it's a game point here for more no. match points. And there's the winning volley behind. Oh, I'm telling you, from what I've seen, if he just hits the backhand cutter time and time again, he gets a, a, a run of points. Who could argue with that? Well, it's just you and me here, so if it's not you, it's not going to be me. Uh, see, now you see Broderick speeding it up a little. Six twenty-five, Brad. That started at three fifty-five. I know your math's not great. So far. But that's a long match. That's how many hours it is? There we go. That's so good from Adoya. Ah, such so good at the net. Brother can make any tough up there. So, Mark, you mentioned before about the Blanchard and the Children's Cups. And um, what are those exactly? So they're your four best results in terms of national ranking points earned in the five Grand Prix events. And the top finisher on the men's side? Hughes and Powers. Yep. And 
they'll win the Blanchard Cup. That hurts. Play such a good point. Unbelievable volley from Roderick. We talked earlier about how amazing is it staying on that backhand side. Yeah, and he had to swipe that one. It was just an amazing volley. It was a great drive from Adoya. Uh, he's pulling it out now. He's trying to make it happen. Two points from victory. And on the women's side, Hanish and Van Starenberg clinched it today, passing Anika, Barrent and Anika. Oh, triple match point. Score is actually 40, love. All right, so tough hole here. All right, one back. 40-15. Two back. 40-30. This will be match point number five. Yep. And that's going to be trouble, but he gets there, hobbling. That's going to do it right there. Game, set, match for Broderick McNerney. 6-4, 3-6. 6-3. Any closing thoughts, Brad? You know, looking forward to a great women's final coming up. Hanneschen von Starenberg, you know, and... Who are you picking, Brad? That's a tough one. It's like you said, you know, the Staklasova and Andrekova, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take them as an unseeded team to win the tournament. You sure you don't want to qualify that? Maybe if somebody plays well. It's well, very decisive. I'm going to take the OVA team, the teams with the OVAs at the name. Okay. The end of their name, and um, How about the it men's should be final? A, a great final. Yeah, and in the men's final, I think it's both. Of, I think it's a pick 'em for sure in the men's final, and uh, I think it all depends on whether Araya and you know Parsons can play at the right pace and keep their offense up without giving enough back offense to McNerney and uh, and Broderick out there. So should we look forward to two great matches? Pleasure calling this with you, Mark. Always a pleasure, Brad. So we'll be back in a moment after these messages right here on the APTA Network with the women's final presented by Enet Live.